Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew, and this is episode 275. I'm here with the talented and beautiful Ms. Dana, and I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Of course, thanks for having me. Now, for people who want to know what the Keith Andrew Network is, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can still overcome controversy and reach my goals in life. At the same time, I'm able to turn myself into a perfect <clears throat> example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities. But you should never give up and you should prove to people you can still mount to something. Now, is that exactly. being... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying exactly. That's a good way to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a half hour every time to see how it goes. And sure. starting off, you know, I'm going to ask you the easy questions, and then I'm going to pass it to you, and you can ask me anything you want, supporting a good cause, making a new friend out of it. And starting <laughs> off, what can you tell us about yourself? Alrighty, well, um, my name is Damien Torhagen. I'm an actor and a musician. I'm also a writer. Uh, I've been doing this for a number of years. Um, I am DC-based, so... Um, sometimes I stay in the area, but I do also move around, so kind of eastern seaboard. It's an opportunity to see the world, see what's out there, and, and kind of present, present my imagination for everyone to see in, in a bunch of different forms. So. No, absolutely. Now, when you were growing up, what was your wife like? And... Did he ever do any sports growing up? Okay. Uh, when I was growing up, I actually I was part of a family where we moved around a lot. So I got to really see different parts of the country. And um, I feel, I guess, more connected in general with the, uh, with the world because we got to do all that travel. Um, I spent the largest number of years in uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, which I don't know if you know it, but that was actually one of the places where they mined the uranium. They refined the re uranium for the, uh, the bombs in World War II. So it was really, it was a historical city, but it was also a city that really felt the the weight and the burden of, of the history that was on it. And that just that kind of shaped me and I've always been interested in history and kind of trying to give back for what you have. So I grew up that way. Um, otherwise, perfectly normal kid, you know, I went to camp in the summer um, and I played on a softball team. I was in a bowling league and just really trying to make the most out of life and wherever we settled, I just, you know, I would try to find other people who were interested in the things that I was in and Go from there. No, absolutely. And now for people who want to know what the type of background you have, do you have, are you on stage right now or are you just on the go? Um, I am actually a more of a screen actor. Uh, I do stage when I can find it, but uh, I do uh, screen acting work. So you can, <laughs> in the wonderful world that we live in, if you Google my name, uh, a lot of uh, my links will show up on YouTube. Uh, otherwise, uh, I, I do have a website where things are kind of consolidated yeah. together. But, yes, for the most part, uh, when it comes to acting, I'm doing uh, stage or I'm doing uh, training films. Uh, I'm also a musician, so if uh, you're in the DCMD Nova area, uh, Northern Virginia, uh, then you can catch me on stage that way. Uh, that's a lot of fun. We're a horror glam band. Oh, that's really cool. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot. What can you tell us about that? Well, um, we've been doing it for two or three years at this point, and it's kind of a send-up of the classic horror movie. So uh, we, we do all the blood and gore. I, I wear special effects makeup. We're all in costume, and uh, the idea is to kind of try to t transport you through the screen so you're actually in that alternate world. Um, uh, so a lot of kind of special effects-y stuff as I can figure out how to do it. Um, and 
I guess the other part, the glam aspect, is to just try to make it as big and as crazy uh, and as ridiculous as possible. So it's a lot of fun. No, absolutely. And now for a while, uh, asking before, it's what type of background do you have? Are you at your place or are you on stage right now? Okay, so I guess in terms of what I'm doing right now, I'm uh, trying to switch gears, actually. So um, I had primarily been doing acting work, but I've started getting into voiceover work now as well. So I have been continuing to do acting. Uh, I'm, in fact, in the running for uh, a lead role on television next week uh, for the Discovery Network. And... Um, but I also, I've always, I love doing voices. So uh, if you think of like an audio book, uh, I really love the idea of putting on different people in my voice. So I've always done that uh, when I act and I've done that in my band. So now I'm like, oh, well, why don't I do it directly in voiceover? So I've started kind of looking into how to do that um, and building my demo CD. So I should be getting into that um, here in the next month or two. And really trying to hit the ground running. No, absolutely. And after the show, I do have a couple ideas for you. Well, I was wondering, what type of wall is behind you? Is that like, are you in your apartment or are you on stage? I am actually outside. Uh, you, uh, you caught me going between jobs. So this is uh, kind of an industrial wall setting. Um, I, am, I took a break. I'm, in an, <laughs> I'm actually in an alleyway. Uh, on my way uh, traveling. I had expected to be home at that point, but the job that I was at ran a little late. So <laughs> one ran early and the other ran a little late. I said, all right, well, uh, I still want to do this because you've got an, a really important cause. So I will just find a place that's quiet and move from there. Well, if you want, we can uh, oh, cool. catch up when you're back in your place. I can do that. Uh, would you rather reschedule for another day? Because it's, it's going to be uh, probably after 8 o'clock, and I know you didn't want to go that late. All right, well, we can still continue. I just wanted to say, yeah, I just want to make sure you're comfortable and safe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm perfectly safe. Perfectly safe, comfortable. It's all good. Uh, that's all that matters. <laughs> Now, before I ask you the hard-hitting questions, I'm going to ask you two easy ones. And All right. The first one is, did you ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids? Or are you not a human pyramid, girl? Uh, say that one more time. Human airbend? Human pyramids. Human pyramid. Oh, that would be awesome. I have never done a human pyramid. Uh, however, I have done some minor acrobatics and I'm looking into doing trapeze work so it would be really fun to do the human pyramid uh, but it hasn't happened yet would he be interested in helping me do some uh, a human pyramid sure I love that stuff I'm a loser sure okay <laughs> now the next question I was gonna ask you is who influenced you to be uh, a celebrity, as you are, and who also influenced you to get into acting? Okay, so I started really wanting to get into uh, creative work when I was very little, but actually starting with writing because I was I loved to write. I loved jumping into different worlds. But I was also very shy growing up. So it took me a while to kind of figure out how to how to connect with people and you know really make it make it easy for me because it was easy for other people, but it was tough for me. I was I was I was afraid. But then I I really got into Steven Tyler of Aerosmith. Uh, they're a classic rock band from the 70s and 80s, really big, glammy kind of a band. And Steven Tyler just, he had power, he had presence, he was colorful, he had all these costumes and different voices and seemed like larger than life. And I was like, I want to be like that. I can sing, I can do that. So I kind of started 
working on that myself. And then, in terms of acting, I just, um, uh, just one second. Okay, so in terms of acting, I, I guess it would be, what is his name? He was on, I'm looking directly at his face. It was, he was in Flatliners. He was in The Lost Boys. Kiefer Sutherland. So Kiefer Sutherland and his dad, Donald Sutherland, just had this power and this presence. They weren't handsome. They weren't trying to be leading men. They just had this presence and they draw people to them. And I realized that was what I really liked about Steven Tyler as well, that he just had this this power and this influence and this connection with people and people would just be drawn to him and they'd want to listen to him and, and get excited. And I was like, you know what? I can do that. I can do that myself. If I kind of put my heart on my sleeve and and bring my imagination to life and bring it out to people, you know, people would be really interested in that and, and want to see it and hopefully get excited about bringing their imagination out as well. So I guess it, it was kind of a combination of wanting to bring myself out of shyness and bringing the my ideas to everyone else and then also trying to get other people to bring their ideas um, because my family uh, did uh, work with government mostly so most was in the government and I don't know if you've ever seen uh, the stereotypical government worker but they're very straight laced very tight you know uh, uh, one would almost say colorless and you could see that these people were the same way out of work that they were in work. And I was like, that's just not, there's so much more to life. You know, you can, you can just get excited and, and be out there and be crazy. You don't have to worry about it. So I guess it was a, uh, it was a combination of trying to make myself less shy and, and help other people kind of find their color, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. Now we're going to take a quick commercial break. Now I'm holding up the book so I know where to edit it. <laughs> the first All thing right. I want to promote, and you're a perfect candidate for this, I'm on it. Now for people who, have you ever heard of CelebrityVM.com? No, I haven't. You should check it out. You should sign up. Okay. Celebrity. Say that one more time. CelebrityVM.com. Okay. Now, for people who want to know what CelebrityVM.com is, if you, I'll give you a perfect example. If you would like a personal message from me, say, Hey, Keith, I'm a big fan. Can I have a shout-out? Can I have a recommendation? Can Whatever you want to ask me, you can for $20. And also, if you're a fan of Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, WWE, TNA, Back to the Fuser, Ninja Turtles. You can get a celebrity that you like to do a recommendation for you or say anything you want and get a personal shout out. So ah. that's, yeah, it's really nice. So, oh, that is cool. So it's celebrityvm.com. And the Celebrity. last. Go ahead. <laughs> right. No, I, I, I'm just so that I can remember it. That's all. All right. And I know Skype it cuts in and cuts out. Yeah. And the last thing I want to promote is WooCrates.com. If you're a fan of anime, if you like collecting shirts and a whole bunch of other great things, go to WooCrates.com. And also, if you have a dog, go to BarkBox.com. BarkBox, okay. And also, there's a lot of great deals in Target that that will be part of the video. But going back to the talk show, I'm going to pass it over to you now. Was there anything you wanted to talk about? Anything you want to ask me? This is your time, after all. Okay. Um, well, you know, I, I'm, I was really touched and intrigued by your cause. So I, I, I know a little bit from what you said, but I don't know the specifics. Do you want to kind of talk about your... You're promoting um, kind of getting people with, with 
disabilities to know that they that they can do all these wonderful things and to really believe in themselves and and then get other people to say hey you know we can all do this stuff um uh we should all have equal opportunity can you talk a little bit more about about what you're trying to do and what you've done so far and all right well i'm still uh, in um trial periods this june will be officially four years oh congratulations oh thank you and it's basically i get this a lot and it's really hard to answer it it's just you know i'm turning myself into a perfect example you know people label me as mentally challenged mentally disturbed retarded handicapped I'm never going to amount to anything. I'm this, I'm that. Sorry. And then I was like, screw it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to show you that I have all these labels. I'm going to show you I can still amount to something. Right on. And I'm turning myself into a perfect example for people out there dealing with any types of disabilities or warning disabilities. But if you're very passionate about doing something, you should go reach your dreams and prove those naysayers wrong. That labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. You need to just prove right them against them out to something. Yeah, no, that's, that's, we are totally on the same page. I 100% agree. Um, I guess I was coming at it more from the, the you know, shy introvert angle. Um, but yeah, if you if you have something and you believe in it and you're passionate about it, like go for it. Don't let anybody else tell you that you can't do it. Um, I had family that was not a hundred percent on board with with what I was trying to do, and I agreed with them for a great many years. So. It's only been recently that I said, well, wait a minute, you know, my dreams are still there and they are achievable. I just have to work on it. So, you know, the idea of, of bringing that to people and saying, hey, you know, you got dreams. I got dreams. Let's get out there and do this. Like, that's a big thing. No, absolutely. And there's a lot of different variations to the stories that I like add in, but... Basically, to make this a long story short, I basically just got tired of being put to the side. You know, my brothers are like, oh, go, my parents are like, oh, talk to your brother, or go to talk to your sister. They know this person, they know that person, and they can help you out. And I said, what about me? And they, yeah. st and they stop, and they look right at me and say, what about you? And I'm like, well, I would like to do what you're doing. One, and then you break it down. One, you're not educated. Two, you, you never went, you see, you're not educated. You're not capable of doing it. You, you know, you have, um, basically, basically, you're not capable of doing it. You're not educated. And we, you have poor social skills. There are whatever excuses. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to show you it's a disability. Yeah. I can still amount to something. Yeah, definitely. Congratulations. So, I think you're doing it. No, I appreciate it. So basically that was the straw that broke the camel's back because I, I got sick and tired of sitting at the table and hearing my brother say, oh, well, I can do this, but I don't know. Well, go talk to this person. They know. And so what about me? I got sick of saying that uh, here and what about you? What about you? You can't do this. You can't do that. So it's, uh, you know, it's uncensored. I said, fuck it, I'm going to show you. I'm going to take a chance, and I'm going to see where it goes. Yeah. No, that's 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 a good way to do it. You just got to say, you know, I am going to do this. This is going to happen. And, you know, it may take a while, but if you're determined, it's going to happen. No, absolutely. Now, wrapping up, how can people follow you on social media, number one? And I took this one from the factor. You know, uh, with a spin stops here. <laughs> so, all rights go to Bell Rally. But I like that. You know, I've been doing that recently, the spin stops here. But I want your honest opinion. When I first approached you, 
what was your honest opinion about being on my show? And after okay. being interviewed, how do you feel now? Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, if I can, I would actually like to start with uh, those questions rather than the social media. Because social media is always there. And I think those other questions are more important. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Whatever okay. you want to do. Okay. So when uh, we first connected, I was like, hmm, this is coming out of the blue. I wonder how he found me. But the more we kind of talked about it, I was like, you know, actually, this guy is legit. Because when you get approached on the internet, you know, it can be anything from anywhere. And especially coming from guys, you know, it, it sometimes you're like, oh, I really don't want to go with this request. But, you know, we started talking and I said, this guy's legit. This is a really good thing to do. Uh, I am flattered that he's coming to me. Um, and I'm... I want to do this. So it, you know, right off the bat, I said, okay, let's do this. And, you know, it's been super easy throughout. You know, you've been easy to contact, easy to talk with. Uh, you've got some great questions. Um, you know, forward drive, give and take, it's been really easy to, to work with you. So I say on the whole, it's been a very positive experience and, you know, I would be willing to work with you again or, you know, hand you to some other uh, some other friends of mine in, in related fields if you wanted other people to interview. Sure. You know, while on a subject, uh, what areas do you know? Okay. So uh, acting, of course, uh, but also musicians, uh, both kind of classical and uh, more rock or metal oriented, uh, craft people. Um, dancers, writers, let's see, uh, people who own their own businesses, and then um, political types. So if you wanted more uh, nonprofits or government, uh, the government might be a little less willing to chat, a little more uh, closed, but uh, in general, I, I have a very broad expanse of people that I know. They're all going to be... Um, well, they're not all DC based. It depends on kind of what you're looking for, and we're all over the internet, so it doesn't really matter where they're based. So, yeah, uh, kind of a broad spectrum. Well, I think you now uh, put a good word in with all of them. I really appreciate it. Of course. Now, wrapping up, how I do want to talk to you off the air. But uh, what is your social media? Are you on LinkedIn, Twitter, Stage Thirty Two? I am on pretty much everything. So I am on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. I'm on. Uh, I'm actually uh, just launching a TV channel on Bid Chat, so that should be coming out soon. I'm on Facebook. I am on Instagram, and uh, let's see. My band is on Reverb Nation. Oh, that's awesome! And if you want me to promote anything for you, just tell me, and I'd be more than happy to. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. That's really very much appreciated. No, anytime. You help me, I help you. I always appreciate it. And, and Turnabout is fair play. If I can help you, just let me know. No, absolutely. Now, wrapping up our interview, stay tuned for after the show. But wrapping up the interview, I want to say it's a real honor and privilege to have you as a guest. And, and very happy to, to be here. Thank you very much for having me.